Hey everybody, it's Kevin. Today is Monday the 11th of January 2020. Here goes one of those double numbers, angel number 11. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what that means for some people. Um, I don't really remember in any time where the 22nd or the 11th of a month was particularly um, dramatic. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think back. 1, 11, oh well, yes, here we go. 9, 11, there was that. Um, 1, 11, 2011, there was that. Numbers, <clears throat> they're numbers, right? I hope you had a good weekend. Um, if you were off this weekend, uh, I, what did I do? Oh, um, I told you yesterday we talked about, and I apologize for those people that are getting these messages and these meditations out of context. I do them daily, have done since the end of August. Um, and I realized that some of them perhaps are seen out of date, out of sequence, which is why I start with who I am and what day it is. So that um, folks get an idea of, oh, here we go. This is what we're doing. So um, what did I do yesterday? I got creative. I um, said I had made a blanket several years ago and forgot how to do it. And then found a pattern and found a thing to do last week and then remembered it. Um, and so I spent some time doing that. I spent some time writing on my book. Um, I got stuck a little bit. I got stuck on the sins of insecurity. Um, and I was thinking this morning, that's a lot to say about something that most people experience, um, when it began, what we do, what we make it mean, all of those things. Um, and I was trying to put it into a framework that if I were reading this, if I were reading it, do I want to go on and on and on, driveling on and on and on about, you know, when it happened, what happened, how it happened, um, because, with this particular book, I find it cathartic because I have talked about how I have conversations with dead people, um, but they're really not, well, they died, they're people I knew, they're in spirit, and they talk. Um, anyway, I um, some of it's amusing, <laughs> some of it's just like talking to a friend. Um, and then there are segments of it that pertain to what's the moral of the story? Why am I telling the story? What's the point? Then the conversation will come. Then whatever it is on the other side, the, the spirit will just explain it. Um, and I've, thank goodness I got over the fear of talking about that uh, and explaining it. Um, and the fear really was my own insecurity with being accepted, um, having other people accept it, um, having other people, um, I can't, I don't like the word buy into it, but, you know, feel like it's okay to be that way. Then I landed on, oh, <laughs> different. <laughs> Are we uh, a culture that resists difference? Probably yes. There's all these words flopping about bias, all that, um, that I think folks get confused about. What I do know for sure, I think everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be seen. More importantly, everybody wants to matter. Everybody would like what they say, what they do, what they read, what they write and how they express themselves. They want that to matter. I'm not any exception to that. I think, well, okay, it, things do matter. Hopefully, what matters to you, what matters to me, matters to more people. And as a community coming together, um, if we bind the ties that matter, with another person that binds the ties that matter, we can become unstoppable. Having said that, being unstoppable can also be destructive. So this is where it comes into 
Today's message is, I almost wanted to say brought to you by, I felt like a commercial on TV. <laughs> I was doing my shuffle. I was thinking about what can I talk about? What's the energy? And I love that. I love the fact that I ponder as I'm, you know, making my um, my coffee. Look at this. I picked up this mug at Pier 1 before they closed their doors. A big cup of nope. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that I have that re <laughs> that rebellious human side you know that um every so often somebody said would you like to do so so nope no <laughs> um and it's amusing <laughs> it's amusing to me to see the reaction no mm -mm. and being a no for one thing means you can be a yes for something else um yeah some things don't work for you Claim that. Claim what doesn't work. Uh, so as well, as I'm getting ready to come in and feeding the dogs, I do a lot of things before I come in here and sit down. Somebody asked me the other day, how do you do this at 5.30? Well, you know, I get up about 3.30 with the vampires and, um, uh, you know, feed my pack and get my coffee ready. And by the time I've sort of got myself situated, it's time to get come in here and do this so um now i'm going all over the place babbling so um i was thinking about what's next you know what's coming this is the winter the winter is a season for making sure that we're dormant and is it really dormant because you know i don't think anything's really dormant i'll share this with you talk about dormancy Yesterday, I going about my business and I'm listening to the various um, opinions, thoughts of folks I love and care about. Some I'm buying into, some I'm not. That's fine. Um, I like to listen, though, because I think we have to be informed. And then it's a bit like a menu. I can choose what I would like to eat and I can choose what I don't want to eat. And it doesn't mean that I'm right, they're right, I'm wrong, they're wrong. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means it's a choice. Uh, sometimes the choice is based on need more information. Sometimes the choice is based on curiosity, want to know more. Sometimes the choice is based on that doesn't feel right, let's not go there. Um, and I was struck by yesterday, as I'm going about my business, how strange things have become. Now, strange in a curious way for me, I'm walking into the grocery store and here are piles upon piles upon piles of cherries. Sweet natural cherries for one ninety nine a pound. And I'm struck by this big old pile of cherries. Uh, it's January. <laughs> and it just tickled me. And I'm walking around the store giggling at myself. Just... <laughs> It's January and they're selling cherries, <laughs> which is not really in season until the summer, at least in not this part of the world. Of course, I got clear. I didn't buy any because I thought this is a bit weird. Don't know that I want cherries in January. Like I don't know that I want strawberries and cream in the middle of winter. But things are so different. They are different. They are very different, which brings me to I'm sitting, I'm shuffling. What's my message? And it came up, what's next? And then out of the deck flew, let's have a look. Here they are. The sisters of the season, the sisters of the seasons. Cycles of growth have a natural order. In the winter, everything goes dormant and dies off. In the early part of the string, spring, everything becomes active, woken up. It begins to do the planning stages of things. It begins to start to see things moving around. And if you remember a year ago, the beginning of the, streets, <laughs> the spring, we were all shut down because of the COVID issues. Uh, so our natural order of things was like flipped over. Oh, hang on. There's this expectation. This is what we're going to be doing. This is where we're going to be going. Whoosh, blank shut down you move into the summer and the summer really is um more growth more gathering it's that it's that time where everything's alive everything is just moving in momentum we're actually getting into the meat of the year the meat of our lives the meat of things 
um, communicating, the holidays, all of this stuff goes on in the summer. And then in the fall, things begin to go into dormancy again. We have that cycle that this chapter of our life, the chapter of the year, is, is ending, it's coming to an end. And in the winter time, hibernation and sleep, gather, do what we need to do. The challenge for most people is we want to get in front of the natural order. We want to be impatient with the natural order. We want to try to do anything other than following the patience of the natural order of things. So with the sisters of the seasons, just like seasons, one beckons the other. One part of our life leads to the next part of our life. And there's this blending period between. So what does this mean? Well, the second card made it make sense. I got into my angels, um, cut the cords. Whew. So this is where it became really uh, clear. At the beginning of when I'm meditating and I get into a space every single morning, I usually offer up my own personal um, devotion to angels, spirits, higher ones, the the um i just bring that in because i want to be feeling like this is a a new day and i'm i'm building it i'm manifesting something but i got to build it from the ground which is why we start with our feet flat on the floor and do a scan of the body you have to be present to where you are and what you're going where you're going and know that whatever went before is done it's finished it's gone so i start with um a prayer that i found on these cards, these angel oracle cards, which is what Kyle Gray puts on every one of his decks. Um, and I used it because I think it works. Thank you, angels, for reminding me of your presence and for um, revealing to me what I need to know. I am willing to listen and open to receive. With that comes this request. Cut the ties that bind me to people, places, situations, stories, and anything that is not for my highest good. And I thank you for cutting the cords now. And that basically means that you are clear of anything that is not lined up with what your divine order is, what your divine purposes and there is a lot of controversy flack around that word divine you know when I was little <laughs> I used to see it in movies old Hollywood movies and very bougie women would be seen using that word oh it's divine oh darling that's just divine absolutely fabulous use it um and then, you know, these words get pushed into a different context. It gets mushed into religion or gets mushed into doctrine or wherever that comes from. For me now, it basically represents the light of all good things, the light of the greatest positivity that could be in all of us, that is in all of us. And so when you're following your higher purpose, you're following that energy. You're following the energy that lifts, that lightens, that brightens, that creates a, like I was talking about in another segment, the opportunity, possibility, empowerment, inspiration, rather than stuck in the egoic patterns of nothing's moving, nothing's going, everything's dormant. So these two cards together, if I were to interpret them, you're being encouraged in this time of dormancy to go through everything that is not working. And you can start with the physical because that's what we know. Clothing, Invoices, papers, receipts, old recipes, maybe photos, books, 
um, anything that you have that's tangible, I don't know, tools, whatever that is, that is something that you no longer want, that you no longer need, and really a bigger, 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 bigger piece is, it doesn't serve you. When we practice holding on, stuffing things in drawers, cramming clothes in closets, we're piling things up. And when you pile things up, there's a weight that gets attached to it. So if you think about the fact that if the leaves didn't fall off the trees, there wouldn't be a bud to start the new cycle of blossom in the spring. If the fruit didn't leave the tree, get picked for people to eat, they just stuck on there. The new fruit can't come. So unless you are in the cycle of cutting the cords, cutting the ties, cutting and, and, and purging on a regular basis, nothing new, nothing possible, nothing open, nothing positive, no opportunity has room to grow and to be where it is. Now, how do you explain then all of this? I'm going to call it cultural indifference. Indifference meaning difference of opinion, difference of thoughts, different belief systems. They're different. They're different. I use an analogy, you know, when it comes to politics in this part of the world, in the US, every four years you get to choose between one fast food place and another fast food place. What if you don't want fast food? Neither one is right, neither one is wrong, but you're being asked to pick one. Well, I don't want to eat that, <laughs> any of it, none of it works. And that's where I believe the majority is. And I'm not getting political, please. Personally, on my personal thought about that, not sure anybody's winning, really. I don't know what winning is. It's just this big cesspool of ego. Done. Um, uh, that's my personal thought, anyway. I don't know how any of it moves anyone forward. I don't know how anyone finds sunshine in that. Um, so, in saying this, start with the tangible, the physical, the um, parts of your physical life that don't serve you and use it as a time to say, oh, I get to let go of it. But the more important thing is look at where you're holding on. Look at where things are binding you, are getting you stuck. And how could you cut the cord? All right. So then there's a fear that pops up behind it. You know, when we attach ourselves to things, and I'm using things as a physical because that's what we start with. Things we know, things we see, um, like coffee, right? Do I want to cut the ties that bind me to my morning pot of coffee? No. <laughs> Why? Well, because it gives me energy. I like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the taste of it. Always have. There was a time where I stopped drinking coffee for six months. I didn't miss it. It was just something I tried and I did. And then I did it again, picked it up again, and thought, well, this is actually okay. Now, what did I do when I stopped drinking coffee? Well, I still carried on drinking tea. This is what it is. I enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, by giving up things that I was attached to, things that bind me, I understood there was freedom in something new, a new choice. Um the attachment that somehow I was doing something wrong. Well, no, it's not wrong. I'm making it mean it's wrong, but it's not wrong. The other part that sneaks in, that's a little bit naughty, um, and my analogy is coming that's talking about squeaky. You know, you've got something that squeaks and you're trying to find the squeak to give it some oil. That's the ego, the squeak. It, it creeps in every so often. It, it's the one part of ourselves that won't, doesn't really want us to move forward. Because really, cutting cords, binding, saying goodbye, moving forward, doing all this sounds lovely. But the idea of doing it 
is a little bit alarming. It's alarming. It's why many of us take our time to move forward. Which brings me to the sisters of the season. There is a time and a place for the movement to happen. Everything is in divine order and will it will most certainly magically happen that way. Just as in the spring, things will grow. In the summer, things will flourish. In the fall, things begin to go dormant, die down, back off, decay. In the winter, it's all asleep. Those seasons magically roll into the next. Each thing magically rolls into the next thing. Although we are now at a time where we're noticing when it doesn't. We're only noticing it when it doesn't is because we never noticed it before. We didn't pay attention before. Now we're paying attention. Now we're looking at, oh, this is, oh, I wasn't expecting it. The point I'm making with all of that is to say, cut the cords with the expectation, cut the cords with things that you believe is going to happen and doesn't happen and be okay with what does happen because what does happen is supposed to happen. Now that's hard pill to swallow when there's so much death, destruction, anarchy. Well, you can't get into organisation. Something organised can't organise the organised. And that sounds weird. If something is organised, it doesn't need to be organised again. Here's what happens. Imagine you go somewhere and it's all nice and order and everything's tidy and it's all in its place and things are rolling along. But to something or someone else, it isn't. And somebody tries to organise it again. Have you ever had the experience where one person tries to organise something that's already organised? What do you create? A mess. Creates a mess. So the whole point with that is if you don't have a mess, you've got nothing to organise. You've got nothing to line up. You've got nothing to come out of it. You've got nothing positive to move forward with it. So those of us that are already flying at 30, 40, 50,000 feet above the storm clouds of debauchery and this rumbling craziness, just keep flying high. Just keep following your heart, opening your heart up. Continue to be kind Continue to help your fellow person. Continue to organise your own closets. Continue to discard, donate, do something with things that you don't need, you don't want. And you'd be surprised how healthy that is when you learn to rely on less. You can be more. What is it? Uh, I wrote that down the other day. Do without doing and everything gets done. So just organise yourself. Cut the ties that bind you, the things that are holding you back. It includes people. Sometimes it's time to say goodbye. Or farewell. Or mm, we have to disagree. And leave it alone. No one said you have to have a big old fight and an argument about something. You can say, I don't agree with you. And, and you know, be that way. It's fine. If they don't like you for not agreeing with them, well, then there you know. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to start a problem, I can tell. All right, it is time to meditate. I got on that tangent and ran off with it. There you go. All right, feet flat on the floor, people. Hand on heart. Mm -hmm. All palms to the ceiling or palms in your lap. I'll let you choose. It's your meditation. Big breath in. Let go. Another breath in. Release out. Fill up and make room on the third breath in. Blast and let go. (sighs) 
And start by bringing your mind to your physical body. And from the floor up, work from your feet. Just bring your thoughts in your mind to your knees and your hips and your pelvis. Perhaps you move your joints around. Adjust your seat, get comfortable. Just continue with the rise and fall of your chest as you breathe in. And release out. in the stillness of thought. Simply being. Have the experience of the ebb and flow of your breath. Deepen your inhale and your connection to the lighter divine energetic sources, the vibrate and are connected with goodness. The sources that vibrate and connect with wisdom The source is an energy that vibrate with lightness. And use this opportunity as a refueling of spirit, refueling of your purpose. by turning off the distractions. By being clear. Organizing the present where you are, how you feel By disrupting the mundane, the business as usual, the expectations, 
by disrupting all of those patterns. Allows you the ability to move forward, to grow, to have the experience of something different. With the physical ebb and flow of your breath, and the willingness to be open to listen and receive. Wisdom and knowledge. and clarity Notice if you find yourself fidgeting, deepen the breath. If you're having the experience that your thoughts are racing, Make a choice to think about where your hands are, your feet are. Practice the art. Master the skill of returning to the present. Being with the experience of deep breathing. Your mind and physical, physical body totally relaxed. 
totally at peace. your soul and your spirit purposefully anchored inside your body everything is good The art, mastery of meditation requires commitment and practice. With continued commitment and practice, comes the re-establishment of divine order and energy That is part of who you are. Gently, gently allow your consciousness Be aware of your physical surroundings, your seat, your feet, your room. Feel complete, bring your hands to prayer at heart center, just to honor yourself for practicing and committing. Lift your prayer to your third eye center, acknowledge the divine and everybody else acknowledge the divine everywhere as we bow and say namaste hmm. that's it simplify everything look for the simple way to do what you do and be who you are all right my friends i love you thanks so much have a great great um i forgot to read Journey from the Heart. Mm, I need to read two tomorrow then, don't I? I need to read the 11th and the 12th. I'll do it. Right, lots of love. Bye.